Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the last little session we're going to do on children of the Bible. So this will be the last one for this term. Um, we've been running it basically from the beginning of the year. We did first, five in the first term and five in the second term. And just from my side, I've seriously, thoroughly enjoyed learning more about the children from the Bible because every adult started off as a baby. Every adult started off as a child. Um, every adult started off learning how to do things, how to, to be, how to be a better person, what not to do. And... I love learning from children. My own children teach me so much every single day, um, and it's what a privilege it is to be a parent. Now today we're going to learn about a, 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 a person in the Bible that's not often spoken about, but actually when you hear his story, you're going to be amazed at, at how big it actually is. Now, who of you recently watched King Charles being crowned as king. So there was a huge inauguration ser service and ceremony for him where he became King Charles officially. Obviously, when his mom, the queen, passed away at the end of last year, um, immediately, just automatically, because he was her son, her eldest son, he immediately took on the role of king. But recently, we actually were able to watch it on TV where they do a whole service and he becomes king. Now, he, he is in his 70s and he has finally become king of England because of his birthright, because, like I said, he was the eldest son to the queen. Now, this child that I'm going to be talking to you about became king when he was eight years old. So, if you don't have a brother or sister at the moment who's eight, or a child who's eight, or a cousin, or think about someone in your life who you know is eight years old, and then picture them ruling over a country, or an area, or ruling over anything, actually. If I think about it, if I was made queen all of a sudden, or president of South Africa, I wouldn't know where to start, because I've not been taught in those ways. Now, Josiah's father, that's who we're talking about, Josiah, his name was King Amon. And he ruled in, in a time where the, lots of Israelites were succumbing. That means they were tempted and they followed suit in actually worshipping gods, other gods. Sometimes they were like ornaments, but they weren't God, our God, the God of Israel. And People were upset at the time because they saw that King Amon was not stopping this. They were letting, he was letting the, the people do as they wish, and they, people were not happy. Now, one day, when Josiah was eight years old, a terrible thing happened. His dad, the king, was actually killed. And immediately, immediately, purely because of his birthright, he stepped into the role of king, an eight-year-old boy. Now, his playground, which was the castle that they probably lived in, was not a playground anymore. It was where he worked. It, he became the, the ruler of an entire country. Everyone bowed to him and called him Your Majesty. Now, lucky for him, he had a mother who supported him and helped him along the way, and he also had people that you call advisors. Those are people that give advice to the king or give advice to the ruler, and they helped him, obviously. But the fact remains, he was eight years old. He could not be a normal child anymore. However, because of his support, everyone was really proud of him and, and used to compare him to a great king of the time who was King David. So that, that was a really big compliment. Now, Josiah's name, interestingly, means the Lord supports and God did support him. He helped him along the, the road. And it just reminds me of a verse from Esther that says, you were created for such a time as this. That was part of Josiah's story too. He was created for such a time as that to actually cause change in the kingdom. Now, a few years later, when Josiah was a little bit older, he decided that it was time to get rid of all the 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 things that were worshipped in the country, in the, in the kingdom that were not of God. So he got rid of all the idols, and he, was, he told the people to smash them to pieces, to get them out of the kingdom. 
And then he said, right, now it's time to fix the temple of the Lord, which was obviously left to wreck and ruin. The builders got to work immediately. The priest, Hilkiah, made sure everything went smoothly. One day, he sent Josiah a very old book with God's laws written in it. Now, this book calls it a book. It was probably a scroll, rolled up. A scroll was papyrus, it wouldn't have even been paper, that people used to write on, and the Egyptians used to roll it up. And in this temple, which was completely destroyed, Hilkiah the priest found this scroll. And on this scroll was all the, the, the laws that God had given to his people written on it. And the Bible tells us that when Josiah read this, he ripped his clothes in, in despair. He was so angry and upset that the, the country had become so bad that they'd lived like this and so differently to what God had instructed them. Josiah descend, decided to send Hilkiah and four of his very important men to Hilda, the prof, prophetess. The prophetess, say, he said, go and ask the Lord about the words found in this book. So basically just to confirm that what they had writ, seen written in the scroll was actually in fact God's word. It could have possibly even been the Ten Commandments. It, it, was, it was stuff that had been recorded previously to Josiah reigning over the kingdom about how to live as a person of God. And when they reached Hilda, the prophetess, she was ready with a message from the Lord. She said, the Lord said he will destroy Jerusalem because the people worship other gods. But tell King Josiah, the Lord saw how upset he was. And he knows how sorry Josiah is about everything. Or even though it wasn't his fault, he, the, the prophetess said that God saw Josiah's heavy and broken heart about the, the sin of the people. And therefore... The Lord will not destroy Jerusalem in Josiah's lifetime. Josiah was so thankful. He called the Israelites to the temple and everyone came to hear what Ki King Josiah had to say. When everybody was gathered together, he took out the book with God's laws written in it. When he read the last law, they all made a promise to God to do everything that he asked in the book of the law. For the rest of his life, Josiah and the whole of Israel served the Lord. What a great story about a little boy who turned a nation back to God. So he came into being a king at the age of eight years old, but God had prepared him for that. He knew God knows what's going on. He knows our future before we've stepped into it. He knows our past. He, he knows everything, and he's prepared our paths perfectly for us. But Josiah actually fulfilled the role that he was meant for on earth. He didn't fight against it. He didn't say, no, I'm too young to be king. He accepted it, and he actually, God used him in his obedience to turn an entire nation back to God. So before, remember, before he became king, his dad, the, the king, had let the people just worship other gods and live terribly and live not according to God's word. And then when Josiah came into reign, he was able to completely change that. Because he also, if you think about it, he could have received that scroll from, from Hilkiah, read it, and thought, oh, this is nonsense, and threw it away. But he didn't. He, his heart was sore because of how badly the people had been living. And he changed a whole nation. So this story, just again, like all the others, reminds me, and I want to remind you, no matter how young you are, God can use you in big ways, in small ways, um, whether it's to show kindness at school, maybe someone has forgotten their water at home by, by giving them something to drink, or they've forgotten their lunch by being the first person to put up your hand and say, don't worry, I can share my sandwich. All of those things are ways that God can use you in your environment. You do not need to be old. You do not need to be working. You do not need to be in high school or in varsity for God to use you. God uses infants just by their story, their life story. So I want us to remember that as we close this section in the first half of the year, that God has such a love for children, and he wants to use children every single day. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for this very special 
um, session and, and um, few weeks that we've been just spending learning more about children and, and your love for children and the impact that children have um, in the Bible and stories that we can read back on. Thank you for Josiah and his life and his obedience and his faithfulness to you. Um, and thank you for the way that you used him to change an entire nation. And I pray, Father, that you would use the children of NMC to be lights as they leave um, just into the, their communities, into their families, into their schools, that they would literally be like lighthouses within, within their schools, that, that people would be drawn to them, that, that people would see and, and know them to be something different, and that difference is you in their hearts. So I pray that as they go through their lives that these stories about children would be embedded in, in their hearts, in their minds, and um, that they would be able to refer back on the, the, the lessons that we've learned over the last few weeks. We pray this in and through your name. Amen.